Hey there. Welcome to another beautiful day and a morning walk. Not getting out real early today, but my goal isn't to walk far. It's to enjoy myself. I'll pass by here this bucket filled with water. See it? And down inside there is a dead rattlesnake. <laughs> the one I killed a while ago, uh, some weeks ago. I didn't want to kill it, but today's topic uh, I think is about what the hell am I gonna do and you know I post online uh, that I'm in a tough spot and it's true I'm very honest about that well a lot of people online are you know trying to say how successful they are and a lot of people who obviously don't know much are trying to sell themselves as coaches or advisors on financial things and you know they're like 20 something and trying to tell other people what they should do and I've met other people like that who use astrology or some pseudo spiritual bullshit to tell them or whatever and it's just like such obvious total shit uh, I saw some energy system the other day where it's just even the form of the web page tells you in the very beginning this is just totally made up shit you know and and so at least I'm honest, and I think I'm one of the few honest people. I think it was Diogenes who is uh, often pictured as a guy with a lantern uh, in the daytime or something. I don't know. Don't trust me on the story. And, and, and he would say, what are you doing in this lantern in the daytime? He would say, well, I'm trying to look for an honest man. This is back in Greek times. You know, he's one of the original, you know, cynics or anarchist philosophers. Uh, it, which he wasn't a very complex philosopher as far as I can tell he was pretty much uh, kind of like I am like you know fuck all this bullshit kind of philosopher hopefully I can do better than Diogenes did and I certainly have uh, a lot more resources and uh, you know I have the ability to educate myself on more points of view than Diogenes wandering around uh, living in a barrel or whatever but one thing I do know is that Someone's value, the value of their thoughts, is not measured on their material success. Uh, material success means almost nothing to me. I mean, I'm going to die, and I'm not going to die with taking shit with me, so I just don't care. Now, I should live with a little bit more resources than I have. Not land, I've got plenty of land. But I should probably have, like, shirts that aren't ripped. Like, I found this t-shirt that was donated... It says Skagway, Alaska, and I think the branding of it is made to look like maybe a candy bar or Subway, maybe a Snickers bar, I don't even know, or Subway sandwiches. You'd think I'd know that since I like Subway sandwiches, but uh, so, so what the hell am I going to do? I... Uh, Occasionally wine online and I get some donations just enough to keep a, keep me alive and pay enough of my debt so that I can pay for internet. That's not good enough. I'm frustrated, I'm desperate, and it's been years of this scraping by bullshit. You know, and I do weird, odd things to actually survive on. Because right now the bank is charging me more than before. I think it's 30% interest. Because uh, cash advances were taken out after my accident. Basically, like many people, I'm getting screwed over by debt. But real badly. Like, the way they're doing it is just horrible. This is Bank of America. I would suggest never banking with them. I would suggest telling people you won't be friends with them if they work there. If you own stock in them, sell it. I just have a personal beef with this bank. I'm sure they're all bad. But, uh, so you know, I was writing, I wrote something online about how it's maybe the end of the project. And as, as often is the case, people are trying to be helpful. Uh, one person suggested I melt down aluminum cans and make things out of them to sell. And it's like, I mean, no other people can do that perfectly capably and uh 
I would make no money doing it. And I'm really not interested in doing anything that requires labor that would compete with local labor. Local labor here has enough trouble. I'm going to be bringing large sums of money into the area, you know? So, I'm thinking much bigger than that. And no, I'm not going to sell off pieces of land. Uh, one cool guy who's been, well, weird guy, clearly, who's been following me for a while, he suggested that I raise, like, bugs and stuff and small animals. And it's like, well, who would I sell them to? But, you know, it's an interesting thing to think about, and I have thought about raising koi. It would be really cool. Koi are a multicolored carp, uh, stereotypically raised in Asia, and they're really a magic fish. I mean, if there's any fish that we, we commonly raise that's really magically, it's magical, it's probably koi. So, that's K-O-I, koi. Not koi as in shy, although... I think if you have food, they're not shy. But anyway, yeah, that would be gorgeous. I would love the idea. Also, uh, going bigger than insects would be having a donkey sanctuary. You know, basically, I have a list of things that I could crowdfund. And probably not a lot that would be directly profitable. I think if I want to be directly profitable, then I need to fix up my infrastructure here uh, quite a bit. Like it would cost... A lot, hundred thousand bucks would not be a small, would not be a big budget. It would be adequate to get this place operational. Uh, I need to put in fencing. I did a cost estimate on how much it would cost to fence all this land, and just the the cyclone fencing, the Maya Cyclonica. I think it's called chain link fence. Chain link fence. Uh, that would cost about $16,000. That's without the posts, which ideally would be concrete. Otherwise, you're signing on for replacing wooden posts every three to five years, uh, which is another cost, an ongoing cost. Well, concrete would last forever. Now, I have planted cedar uh, trees to use as posts, and that's common, and it's a good idea. Uh, but the point is, even just something like fencing, that and that wouldn't even be internal fencing so i would need other fencing for things like donkeys although that could be done with barbed wire i've got barbed wire around everywhere tiny bit of uh chain link fence so anyway i could have really compelling crowdfunding ideas and i've been shy about it it's really hard to ask for money and of course if i crowdfund something then i actually have to do something <laughs> And in the mental state I'm in, being alone as long as I have and somewhat, you know, shaken up still by being so damaged from the accident, it's, uh, it's real easy if, if I have food to just let the years slip by, you know, write a few things online about why well, I think the world's a mess and what we can do to fix it, but not doing things and just thinking of them doesn't get shit done it's not compelling so some of my crowdfunding ideas are about really building things that are extremely innovative uh, my composting toilets are already perfectly innovative well actually they're not I mean it's not a new idea it's just that I do them well and I've realized a lot of things not to do when building them so I uh, Sorry, I'm out of breath. That's why I walk. I need more exercise. I need, I need my, I mean, my body's a mess. It, it, it's very strong, but it's very abused, you know. It's, I eat crap, and uh, I eat the same crap every day. I eat pasta with some sauce every single day, and take two vitamins, and uh, I don't eat any fruit or veggies. You know, I, being alone is, just, like, not healthy. I, I don't live a healthy life. Um, so anyway, uh, I have many other crowdfunding options to do, and maybe I should do a survey on what people would actually want to fund, or maybe I should just, uh, write some of them up and what gets funded gets funded. And that's what I do because I'm willing to do almost any of them. The, the biggest one is probably the most important. And that is, uh, 
uh, living seed banks or uh, really taking food forest farming to another level that people can replicate in different cop and climate zones and they know what to do because I see really dumb questions online ignorant sorry not dumb um, of of people asking really basic things about like well, what the hell should I do how do I start in fact the guy I'm gonna go visit today if he's there uh, he doesn't know what he's doing he knows he doesn't know what he's doing which is good to know and so I need to for him think of him as a, a receiver of this good information right up like well here's what you would do here's the stages I would suggest on developing a forest into a food forest and that's the long-term solution for humanity so I think that's very crowdfundable I have a lot of peripheral ideas to it other than just plant some trees in some normal permaculture way which I pretty much look down on even though I'm a permaculture teacher and I'm bringing the permaculture permaculture is extremely simplistic we have to get a lot more sophisticated and uh, we have to develop and use some tools that we don't currently use so you know for I could basically develop this site which is my vision as a example site but then documenting and creating tools that would serve in other climates around the world and collecting a set of philosophies drawing upon a variety of books a variety of other ways of doing things whether it's one straw revolution Fukuoka is that guy's name I always get it wrong and you know Sepp Holzer in Austria and uh, of course permaculture dudes uh, Holgrim and the other guy's name I'm uh, spacing at the moment um, Ah, sun is out. That's nice. It's been cloudy and rainy, which is lovely. I missed my window of opportunity to plant this year, but anyway, so the other option is to fucking quit. And I could sell this land for a lot, forest to get cut down, it'll become monoculture. I would feel like a failure for the rest of my life, which is kind of your answer right there. I'm not doing it. I'm not selling off pieces of land. Uh, I could uh, crowdfund some really ecologically awesome buildings because I don't have a single building that, that, that I built that is really perfectly designed for this climate and this space. And that would be a budget. I already have the land, so that's taken care of. Uh, I'm <clears throat> I've consulted on some other houses around here and land use and stuff like that and I can imagine a building that uh, we do full rain capture uh, very insulated would need no no additional energy for heating or cooling so no energy use not even firewood although a cosmetic fire would be awfully dang nice using passive solar because uh, the Sun is so awesome here uh, composting toilets obviously a built-in uh, evacuated tube solar hot water heated sauna uh, root cellar will be part of that uh, uh, all solar photovoltaic for lighting and uh, what else that rain capture uh, old solar dehydrator would be nice to toss in there. I think that's useful because it extends the life of their food Immensely you can buy food in season and eat it the rest of the year um, Now I could break all those apart Like I could break all those ideas apart into separate crowdfunded projects And that's not a bad idea since some people are going to be attracted to parts of the project and not others That's cool I uh, Solar powered sauna also saves water between the composting toilets and the so and the sauna. You could save 80% of the water uh, for nor for a relatively normal use. And uh,
Yeah. I have thought about crowdfunding a resurrection project. Resurrecting me. You know? Like getting a passport and I have a surgery I need to get. It's cheap, real cheap surgery, real easy, but I'm in danger because I'm so far from medical services too. So someday it's just going to go bad and uh, it won't be good. Uh, you know, I would get weird stuff like uh, I would get a cell phone signal amplifier because uh, I can't use a cell phone. And so if internet's out, which I think they just doubled the price of my internet, Starlink, uh, or I paid for two months, I'm not sure. I'll have to check when they charge me again, which will be any day now, a couple days. And uh, a couple people have donated. Uh, I got two, no da two donations of $300. That's a huge amount for me here. And it almost makes me relax, but, you know, I don't want to relax. I, I mean, and I'm going to, I mean, I need to go on a food run. I'm out of food again. I thought about, like, fasting every other day. It seems like a lot. Maybe every few days I could fast one day. Maybe fast, like, two days a week. Nah, one day is enough to fast, I think. You know? So, like, every three days. So, like, maybe twice a week. Fast for a day. I cut the dog's food rations down. They're perfectly... They're not starving to death. Look at this happy boy. You happy boy? Yes, you happy boy. You happy boy. Yeah. So, they're not starving, but still... I mean, internet and dog food, those are things I don't want to skimp on, really. I mean, that means I'm in a pretty desperate state when I'm thinking about that. <laughs> um, hosting people I just can't do until I fix the place up. I mean, unless they're here paying or funded somehow to be part of the fix the place up project which would be cool for some people there's a lot of people looking at you know they want to go off the grid and they might even have money to do it and you know they could learn a lot here in a month they could have a month-long program because people who have come here in the past have learned a lot and some of them have learned that everything is harder to do <laughs> but if i did it ideally i would do it right and have, you know, a store for people to buy shit that they think they need, which sometimes they do, because they show up unprepared. And, uh, you know, maybe I should write up something compelling. Some old lady messaged me today, and she wants to see if I'm open having old people live here. And it's like, well, no, I'm not open having anyone live here, <laughs> because, uh, I can barely take care of myself. And the last time an old person contacted me to live here, they wanted to pay five dollars, no, 50 pesos a day, which is less than five dollars a day for food, housing, community, shelter, you know, all this stuff. And it's just like, are you joking me? You know, to get residency here in Mexico, it's extremely expensive. And you want to insult me by giving me, you know, like a few dollars a day to take care of you and you're 70 uh no <laughs> and i get this all the time this is one of the reasons i don't want anybody here is because i just assume that people are here to rip me off or that they want to rip me off and it's that's a terrible way to feel since not everyone's like that but uh but it, it doesn't encourage me to trust people at all um what else can I do? Sell art. That's a long shot. Most of my art's too big. I do have thoughts on how to make smaller art that's shippable. And I could sell some of it. Get an online job. That's an obvious one. Uh, and I should do that. 
And for the right project, the right team and all that, I would do it. That would allow me to fix my solar power because I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I'm like in a car headed for a brick wall, crashing into it. I mean, I'm just headed for certain failure. And I've known that for a very long time. I've just been slowly skimping better, lowering my expectations, watching my place fall apart, watching roofs fall down that were built wrong in the first place because the roof shouldn't fall down. Uh, that would solve all my problems, but it takes me away from the thing I have the greatest passion about currently. It is true that if I was to work on, because I, I work in software, or have worked in software for my whole career, uh, well, now I work in wetware and greenware, meaning people and plants, but uh, if I was working on software that I actually really cared about a lot, and I can imagine such software, that is an option. In fact, you know, I could write the spec and collect the people and we could be co-owners of the product. Some of the ideas I have are not financially profitable directly, but uh, you know, they could even be done by a nonprofit and nonprofits can pay people, but then you'd be looking at, you know, getting Maybe crowdfunding it even. I could do that. I would have to tell people what it was. In that particular, the one I'm thinking of, I don't want to tell people what it is. I want it to get functional. Minimum viable product, minimum lovable product uh, right away. So that, so that uh, well, I mean, does that really matter if people steal the idea? Because they're going to do it different than I would do it. Uh, there's parts of it I could keep private that would cause it to uh, be super useful to me and others. I've got to be really careful here because this is a very slippery, slippery trail. It's all, it rained a lot and you're very easy to hit your ass on the trail. Uh, and then there's some stuff that's beyond what I can create, which I'm more interested in in some ways. Well, I'm, more, I'm interested in any software project, but... No, I mean, any one that I'm interested in. Helpful statement. Logical equivalencies. Uh, but there's other ones where I could join a team, uh, and that would be really fun, actually, uh, and perhaps work in the part of the industry that I'm the best at. Actually, that would be the way to go. Maybe, I, I mean... Geez, you know, a few videos talking about who I am and what I envision and then trying to find somebody who's already doing that or very close to doing that. I mean, I would be a great person to have on a team like that. And I could suggest some feature ideas that they probably haven't thought of. And this would be like, you know, augmented reality, food forest farming, gamifying food forest farming. There's some really cool shit there. And that's beyond me technically. Although it isn't, there's only a couple small problems in there, and the rest of it is solves problems, and it's just a matter of collecting the, the solutions. Um, and the, the gamification aspect could actually help it spread faster, because making a very specialized tool for food forest farming doesn't sound like a big money maker. Uh, gamifying food forest farming all around us does sound like it could spread really well and i haven't seen an augmented uh reality game yet that i found enticing you know the pokemon go joke uh it's the one starts with an e They have two teams. God damn. Uh, it comes to me later. But n none of these seem compelling to me in any way. Um, they're just not good enough. And the, the done the right way, I mean, you could put in business aspects of it. Uh, people would map the world for you. And 
if you distributed storage of some of those things, you could even save on your server costs because right now a lot of people are developing things that are very heavy on server costs, AI being the number one there, uh, where AI is just you know, using up more server costs than, than money they can make, and so they're going to have more trouble with that. But I'm still excited by what AI has done. Um, but So what the hell am I going to do? Well... I have started on getting control over my contact lists. I've been trying to figure out, you know, who I would have here and why, and uh, not allowing people to just come and play for free. That was my biggest fuck up I've made in the last 20 years. I hosted too many people for either way cheap or, or free, and uh, and some of them weren't even people I liked. So, uh, anyway, there's some thoughts for you, and I, I don't know, don't, don't recommend to me what you think I should do, unless it's something I never thought of. There was a guy who visited me a long time ago, who was a volunteer, and he said to me, Brian, I've got a great idea for what you should do here. You probably have heard it. And I said, you know what, I bet you I've heard it. And he told me, and of course I had heard it. Like, like, in all these years, you think I haven't thought of damn near everything? You know, it would have to be such a bizarre... And also, ideas are cheap. Implementing them is hard, you know? I mean, I would love to set up a place here that it had every kind of innovative beehive there is. That would be cool. What a great project. Well, that means a bunch of messaging. That means learning beekeeping. So it's, it's real work on the ground. It's a bunch of communications work. It's selling the concept. And, and it's doable. And the idea of having sponsors for things is awesome. I mean, there are people who would send me a free beehive of their beehive. And I could have, you know, 10 different really innovative beehives. Because, you know, we've been using these Langstroth or whatever they're called. Beehives, the square ones with the little panels. A long time. It doesn't mean they're the best kind. And we could even do it scientifically and compare, like, well, how much labor went into it? How did the bees do? Maybe we would want three of each hive so that we could make sure we don't have an error in, uh, you know, like if one of them failed, that doesn't mean that that's a failure as a hive. It could have been something else. And uh, so, you know, we could have 30 hives and in three different places, one in each spot. And, and then track it, track the production, track the time spent. Uh, we could have hives that you can see inside the hive, you know, through the wall. That would be a special hive. You can see those little bees working away. Pretty cool. That's just one more idea. The point is, I don't need people to list for me, unless you have something really innovative, every possible idea. I would be interested in, hear from, in hearing from people who, who see the project, uh, know enough about it to suggest sponsors or partnerships or anything, and I'd be interested in really hardcore people who want to come here and either get sponsored or uh, sponsor themselves, something, but not for free. No. No fucking way. Done with that shit. I'm not going to live like this anymore. Somehow I'm going to not live like this anymore. It's a terrible way to live. <sighs>